here. I'm Beth with 50 Plus Beauty, and I can't wait to share this video series with you. Yes, that's right. I actually have a series for you called A Slim You in 22, and this is video one. It's kind of your boot camp to get yourself together in terms of weight control in 2022. I decided to do this video after a video that I posted about a month ago went viral. And here's a look at that video, How I Stay Slim After 60. And in that video, I share the tools and tips and techniques I have used over the years to get my out of control eating under control because as I always say, there's a 250 pounder inside this rather slim body. Here's a picture of me and I was actually eight months pregnant in this picture. But during that pregnancy, it was my first pregnancy ever and I was like 26 years old and I gained like 80 pounds and I was topping 200 pounds when I delivered my son. And during that pregnancy, I ate exactly what I wanted to eat, which was sometimes five meals a day and the items I ate weren't really all that healthy. And that just gives you the knowledge that I'm not a naturally slim person, that I have developed a lot of ways to maintain a good physique over the years. And I'd like to share those with you because it is something you can learn. And if you haven't seen that video, I hope you'll go back and take a look at it. In the last month, it got 350,000 plus viewers. It was definitely a viral video for me. And normally I get between one and 200 comments per video. And in this video, they're topping like 1600 comments so far in the first month. And in this video, I shared with you how I have this hunger monster is what I call it inside. It is really addictive eating. And I think a lot of women and men out there share the same kind of relationship that I have with food, which is that when confronted with a bag of cookies, some people can moderate, about 50% of you out there will say, oh, I'll just have one or two. And then the other 50% of us say, oh my gosh, there's no eating one or two Oreos. I will eat half the bag, the whole bag. And this video is part one of a series that's going to help educate you on the ways in which I have maintained my slim physique over the years, sometimes better than others, and believe me, I am not perfect. And one of the ways that I shared with you in my first video is that I really reduce or eliminate carbs, sugars, processed foods, that kind of thing. Basically foods containing sugars and flours. And that's what I want you to do over the next 30 days if you want to join with me. And I have done that for the past seven days. And I will tell you that because I'm kind of a slim person when I maintain my low carbohydrate eating. And basically I maintain kind of a paleo approach, which is meats, vegetables, and some fruits but you really don't eat the grains, you don't eat the sugars, you don't eat the processed foods. It's more of a whole foods diet, but you're really avoiding the sugars and processed carbs. Since I eat that way about 90% of the time, I'm able to maintain my weight pretty easily. I hardly have to think about it, so I do cheat at times. Although when I switched to paleo five years ago, I was very strict at first because it was helping me reduce the inflammation in my body from arthritis that I'd had. Once the arthritis inflammation left, then I started to get a little sloppy on my diet and I would have candy bars occasionally. I would have sugar rich salad dressings. I kind of made that a pretty normal habit. I definitely have a meal a week where I kind of go a little wild on carbs, at least one meal a week. I was getting pretty sloppy about it. And about a week ago, I started thinking about this video series and I knew I wanted my first video to be about quitting sugar. And I wondered how I should go about telling you how to do that. And I'll basically be explaining that to you in a few minutes because I'm going to take you through my video diary of my first seven days without sugar. Actually, this is the seventh day. So I'll show you my first six days without sugar. And I have to admit, day four was Christmas and I did not make a little video that day for you. But all of the other days, you can see the roller coaster ride of what it was like for me to quit sugar. And I will say that in addition to being paleo and low carb, I started to integrate the ideas of author Susan Pierce Thompson, who wrote Bright Line Eating. And that is an absolutely wonderful program if you happen to be high on what she calls the food addiction scale. And out of a scale of one to 10, I'm a very strong, maybe 9.75. I think Susan is a little higher than me because she's been addicted to some drugs and some other things like that. I never quite went to that extent in terms of addiction, but I'm pretty high up there. But one of her first tenets is to eliminate sugar, flour, and artificial sweeteners. And although I really knew I should do that, I only did it for a while and then I fell away from it. And so now I'm issuing this 30 day challenge actually to both of us 
to eliminate sugar, flour, and artificial sweeteners. And I will show you the before and after results of Amanda, and she is with littlemissfearless.com. And there she is. This is her three months before and after pictures on no sugar and no flour. And as you can see in the before picture, she's got quite a belly on her. She's got 15 to 20 pounds of extra weight. And then in the after picture, just three months later, of just quitting sugar and flour, look at her wonderful results. She's lost that apple fat type belly, which as we all know, is really helpful in terms of combating heart disease because people who gain fat in their bellies tend to be predisposed to having heart disease type issues. So she's obviously gotten healthier in addition to looking better. And about a week ago, I started wondering how to introduce you to this idea of quitting sugar and also flour and artificial sweeteners. And amazingly enough, I actually experienced a horrendous outcome eating too much sugar. In fact, it was seven days ago last Tuesday. So instead of explaining that to you, I rewind the tape seven days and show you my video diary of my first seven days on no sugar, no flour, and no artificial sweeteners. I was having a normal day. I was doing my low carb. I was not thinking about sugar. And then I went to Trader Joe's to get some of those prepared chicken breast type meals. Alan and I like those. And being in Trader Joe's reminded me that at one point I'd gotten some gluten-free pumpkin bagels. And I really love those. And so I went over to look at the bagels. And really, even though it's gluten-free, I don't do well with grains. Grains are processed carbs. And I really don't do well with that. But I went over there and I bought some bagels and then I found some gluten-free muffins. It, it was just like the drug experience continued. It was like, well, okay, I'll get some gluten-free bagels, which I knew I shouldn't have because they don't do me any favors. And so then I got some gluten-free muffins, like banana nut or something like that. When I saw those muffins, I, I immediately went to butlets. <laughs> which are one of my favorite things, which are, they're gluten-free, they can be gluten-free, at uh, Nothing But Cakes, and I really do like those, and they're high sugar. And I thought, as long as I'm getting a muffin, why don't I just go get a buntlet? And I thought, I'll get Alan one too, because that'd be such a nice thing to do for him. So I went and I got the buntlet, and I ate it. And I have to say that by the end of it, it didn't really taste that good. But the first few bites were fabulous, as usually happens with sugar. And I got home and I thought, ooh, I have those gluten-free bagels, which is not something I would normally eat. But I thought, ooh, that would be so good with some butter. So I ate that and then I realized, oh my goodness, I've probably eaten, I don't know, over a thousand calories and I felt pretty lousy. But I thought, I just won't eat dinner because I've already, you know, kind of screwed things up with the buntlet and the... Uh, gluten-free bagel. It was an everything bagel, by the way. And then it was very odd because I went through my evening and I asked Alan to take me to Sephora because I needed to purchase a few things for a video. And so I came back and I was putting that makeup on because I like to kind of practice putting makeup on if it's new makeup. So I was in the bathroom doing that and I've literally never had this happen. But I put that makeup on, got about three-fourths of the way through, started to put the mascara on, and I literally got so dizzy that I thought I was going to pass out. I got dizzy. I felt sweaty. I was scared to death. I called Alan. I said, what is going on? And he said, well, come in and talk to me. And I'm like, I can't. I'm afraid to walk because I think I'm going to fall over. And so I came out to this chair from the makeup room, which is probably, I don't know, 50 feet. It's not, not very long, 25 feet. And I'm sitting here and he's like, come in and talk to me. And I'm like, I can't. I can't get out of this chair. I was terrified. I was sitting here sweating. Felt like I was about to pass out. It was a horrendous feeling. And then I get up this morning and I look it up online. Can sugar cause you to pass out? And sure enough, and it was almost to the minute. What it said online is that about four hours after a heavy sugar intake with no more food, which I didn't eat, that your blood sugar can drop so low that it can cause you to pass out. And that is exactly what happened for me. I got up this morning too, and I didn't even feel like exercising, so I did not exercise because quite honestly, I was very terrified that I had passed out the night before, and I was thinking it could be all these terrible things, but that is how bad I felt. I thought something is desperately wrong with me, and come to find out, it was the poisonous effects of high blood sugar and then low blood sugar, and I was in a fine mood, okay mood, before I started eating all that sugar, and 
I don't normally get like warlike with Alan, but I was. All of a sudden I ingested those two sugar-filled items. Christmas is coming and the maids can't come this week to do the house because it doesn't work with Christmas. You know, they'd have to be coming on Christmas, which of course they won't, which is fine. But I had to clean the house. I had to get ready for, for Christmas. I had to get some pack packages wrapped. And so by the time Alan came home after my ingesting both of those, you know, the high sugar buntlet and then the bagel, I was like warlike. It was like, you've got to help me clean this house. And that is not normally me at all. In fact, looking back, I'm just horrified at how horrible I was. And I think it all had to do with the high of the sugar, extreme irritability came on, and then four hours later, I was passing out. I can't do this anymore. One day at a time, I have to get this horrible substance out of my life. So anyway, that is one of the motivations with quitting sugar. Okay, here I am at the end of day one of no sugar and flour, and I feel kind of lousy, quite honestly. I feel extremely tired. I did not adhere to the idea of not eating between meals. I went out to lunch and got my Wendy salad that I tend to do. And instead of getting extra dressing, which was raspberry vinaigrette, which is heavy sugar, I did not do that. I asked them for no dressing, which they were surprised about because I usually get extra sugary dressing. And I brought the salad home and I put Paul Newman's vinegar and oil dressing. It's bottled dressing, but it's really good. And it has no sugar. I put that on my salad. And then I went through work and about four o'clock I left and I was so tired, so tired because I think I was using even that extra raspberry vinaigrette dressing, the sugar in that at lunch to get through my afternoons. That's a pretty popular salad that I eat a lot of. You know, I, I have two jobs. I, I own my company and I do YouTube. And so I'm not making my lunch and taking it to work with me. I'm going to Wendy's and getting a salad, which I think is pretty healthy, but Anyway, I got home about four. I was totally exhausted, wanted to take a nap, but I was starving. And so I ate some nuts, which really is not the best thing for me with my IBS, but I did fine with that. Um, it was eating in between meals, which in one of the weeks here, girls, pretty soon, we're gonna stop eating between meals and I'm gonna stop right along with you. But I will tell you the first day you go into no sugar and no flour, you might not feel the best. I don't feel the best. And it's interesting timing because tomorrow is Thursday and my son is coming home for Christmas, like at 11 o'clock. We're picking up at the airport at 11 o'clock. And then Friday is Christmas Eve day, Saturday is Christmas. Um, then we have Sunday and Monday, we have another family Christmas party. Another side of the family is coming in to have Christmas at my house. So I have a lot going on, a lot of Christmas treats, but I'm going to do it with no sugar and no flour because I am sick, sick, sick of living like this. I, I can't really stand it. So anyway, that's how I am today. Uh, not the greatest, but this is the first day of getting rid of kind of an addictive substance in my life. So I would imagine for the next few days, I won't feel the best. Okay, it is the end of the first day and I feel really, really tired. I was uh, listening to the Bright Line eating program, which is kind of what I'm following in a, in a modified way because I, I just want to stick low carb and I don't want to start writing down my foods at every meal and I don't want to start weighing foods. But it did say when you first start on it because you're not feeling very good, not to exercise. And actually I don't really have the energy to exercise, it's funny. I didn't realize how much I relied on sugar because every day I was having that double salad dressing at lunch, which was the raspberry vinaigrette, which was heavy sugar. And I haven't had sugar today or flour and I'm very tired. So anyway, end of the first day, I'm sure it's only up from here. It is the morning of day two of no sugar and I'm feeling slightly better. And I had a really weird experience last night and this is getting very TMI, I know, but normally I wake up two to three times a night to pee. <laughs> I'll just be honest with you. And I don't sleep well in part because of that. Yesterday was my first day of no sugar, and I don't know, this could have been a weird coincidence, but literally, I have never had a night, probably in two or three years, where I didn't get up multiple times per night. But last night, I did not get up all night long. I slept completely through the night, completely, and I woke up at my normal time. I didn't really want to get out of bed, but I was supposed to get up at 
4.45 and I got up at 5.30, but I did eventually get up. And uh, anyway, I'm feeling better somewhat today. Plus it's the day before Christmas Eve. Tomorrow is Christmas Eve. My son comes tonight at 11. I've got a lot to do. I've got to get the groceries for uh, his visit home and I've got to make some chili, which to me is a big deal because I'm not Miss Cook. Even chili. I know it's crazy. I used to cook for my family, but I haven't done it in years. And my sister and I both agree that we now hate it because we have busy lives and it is very hard to add being a master cook to what you do. Even being a mediocre cook is a challenge for me. I, you know, if I were rich, I would have a cook. That would definitely be what I would do. And it would be a healthy cook that would cook low carb and no sugar and all that. So anyway, I diverge and Merry Christmas to you all, no matter when you see this video. I think Christmas is a wonderful holiday and that we should take it with us all throughout the year. So no matter when you see this, Merry Christmas. I do have to wash my hair this morning. And so I'm using this great little hair helmet thing that is a heated kind of a bonnet. And I will link it below. I think it's really helping my hair do better. And I'm using this great conditioner called It's a 10. It's kind of expensive, but I think it really does work. The review said it works better than anything. And so far, I am loving it. So anyway, quite honestly, I feel nauseous. I don't feel very great this morning. It is going to be interesting for me to go into the Christmas holidays knowing I won't indulge in sugar and or flour because in the past, even though I'm low carb, because I'm rather thin, I could always get away with having some treats and really binging out on Christmas. And I'm not going to do that this year. So it's going to be really interesting to see how it goes over the next few days because I am bound to determined to get the sugar and flour out of my life for good and the artificial sweeteners because I'm sick of always craving food. I don't want to do that anymore. So anyway, here I am. I'll check in later. Okay, it is the middle of day two and I feel much better than I did. I still don't feel totally back to normal though. I really don't. I'd say on a scale of one to 10 with 10 being as good as I feel, I'm probably a five, maybe a six. I don't know, I'm still slightly nauseous. I had a terrible morning this morning. I slept all night and didn't wake up to pee as I mentioned before, which was great. But I woke up feeling very tired and very much like all I wanted to do was go back to bed, which is not like me. And now I feel a little better. I did a couple of YouTube videos this morning. I kind of had to force myself to do that. But I am feeling better than I did yesterday. I will say though that my salad without the sugary dressing I usually have, like pomegranate, raspberry, vinaigrette, something like that, the salad tasted pretty lackluster and I didn't even finish it, quite honestly. And there were no sugared pecans on it as there had been on previous days. <laughs> I love that Wendy salad, but Anyway, I am learning to deal without sugar and without artificial sweeteners. I have a McDonald's iced tea, but I did not put any equal in it or anything like that. So that's how I'm doing in the middle of day two. Okay, here I am the morning of day three, and I had a terrible experience last night. Basically all day yesterday, my second day with no sugar, I felt lousy and tired the whole day. I forced myself to do a video but by the evening, Alan came home and I was lying on the couch and he's like, let's go out to dinner. We usually eat at this Asian restaurant called Oh Yeah, which is great, weird name, every Saturday night. And I actually have a fairly high sugar dish. I normally have yellow Thai curry almost every week, pretty much every week. And it is it has a lot of coconut milk in it, so it's very high sugar. And normally I love to go eat there, but I was like, honey, I don't wanna go. I'm too tired, I just wanna lie on the couch. I just wanna sleep. And he's like, oh, come on, you know, it's Christmas coming. It's Christmas Eve tomorrow, let's go. So I kind of forced myself to go. And when I got there, it was the weirdest thing. I ordered a totally no sugar dish. It was Mugu Gai Pan and it was okay, but I started eating it. And normally I eat the whole thing. I eat the whole dish, whatever they bring me. I just do. But this time I started eating it and I took about six bites and I thought, I can't eat this. I'm not hungry, I feel lousy. And it didn't taste very good because of the lack of sugar, but I just was not hungry. And so I was so tired that all of a sudden I started thinking, oh my gosh, maybe I have COVID. So I booked myself a COVID test later on in the evening. And here I am, as I'm waiting here, that is the sign, COVID testing park here. Walgreens was totally filled up in terms of the free COVID test where they file with your insurance. So I paid a hundred bucks 
and I've done this once before. I was having a dinner party at one point and thought I had COVID in the morning and I didn't want to possibly expose my guests to COVID, which was nice, but it cost me a hundred bucks. So that's what I'm doing this morning. But I will say this is the morning of day three with no sugar and I feel quite a bit better. I would say I feel about 80% of normal, which is amazing. So I'm excited because tonight is Christmas Eve. We're having the family over for chili and I was so tired last night. I could not even make the chili when I got home from that restaurant. Alan made the chili, which was very nice of him, but that's very unusual because I always do the cooking, even though I don't like it. So anyway, I will let you know if I have COVID. I doubt I do. I'm feeling quite a bit better this morning. One of the symptoms of COVID apparently is losing your appetite. And that was so unusual for me that I thought, ooh, maybe I have COVID, but I'm sure I don't. So anyway, here it goes. I'll call the lady and get my swabs. Okay, it is the middle of the day on day three, and I've not had any sugar, artificial sweeteners, or flour. Well, first, I didn't have COVID, which was a wonderful thing. I'm so happy about that. But it is amazing how lousy I felt last night at the end of day two of no sugar. I had no appetite. I was totally nauseous. I could not eat. It was just really weird to not be able to eat because you don't even want to. That's how lousy I felt. And today, as I mentioned, I feel about 80% of my normal self. And it is coming up. I'm feeling better as the day progresses. I'm going to go home and eat my dinner that I have left over from last night. And I actually have an appetite now, which is good. And in the meantime, I'm going to stop at McDonald's. I'm going to get an unsweet tea with no artificial sweeteners. And that sounds kind of refreshing and a little bit of caffeine will help. Caffeine is yet another issue, but I will deal with that later. An Elton John song just came on the radio, and it's day three of no sugar, and I'm not a crier. <laughs> and my husband is sitting here with me. He'll hate me to show him. <laughs> there he is. And it's Christmas Eve day. This is such a good song, and it just reminds me how much I love him and how lucky I am. Merry Christmas, everyone. Man, this going off sugar is a wild roller coaster. Oh, and by the way, I know my face is greasy, but I've got this product at home, this Revlon roller thing that's supposed to roll off the grease. So I wanted to leave my face greasy so I could show you that. But love you all. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays, I guess. How wonderful life is that you're in my world. Okay, I know this is a weird place to talk to you from, but I'm actually in my closet. There's my closet. And I came here because Alan's in the other room and he's trying to get some sleep. So... I did want to tell you it is the end of day three. It happens to be Christmas Eve, and we had a wonderful time. Both boys were here, one with girlfriend, one with wife. We had Alan's mother here. His dad passed in the last year, so that was difficult, but it was so great to have everybody together. Had an absolutely wonderful time today, and I feel so much better now. I think the sugar roller coaster of quitting sugar that I started three days ago, it has definitely been a roller coaster, but I'm feeling much more solid right now and much better. I don't feel depressed. I don't feel tired. I'm not crying. I'm not angry. I just feel like my normal self. And that's a really good feeling after three days of the roller coaster. So anyway, so far so good. And I will have to say, I served German chocolate cake and fudge and strawberry ice cream with the German chocolate cake. Actually, Darlene made the German chocolate cake. I did not make it. And she made the fudge too, quite honestly. But it was not hard for me to not have it. I just knew that it was not on my not on my menu tonight. And uh, so I had no sugar. Even the chili I had had no sugar in it. Nothing I ate had any sugar in it. And I just feel pretty good. I want to tell you that I got through day four, which was Christmas Day, absolutely pretty darn good. I watched my family eat a fantastic dessert. It was a peppermint bundt cake, and it was fabulous. I'll show you a picture of it. It's amazing looking. And they all said, even though it's a limited edition, it's just out for nine days, that it was definitely worth getting again. It was fabulous, which was tough for me because not only was it sugar, but it was chocolate, cream cheese icing, that kind of thing. I'm sorry if I'm making you hungry. But anyway, I did not have anything like that at all. I didn't have any sugar. When I would get hungry, I would have a few nuts or something like that. This is quite honestly the only Christmas I can ever remember where sugary treats were not a part of it. And I did just fine. And I felt less tired yesterday, a lot less tired, although I did take a nap, I was still a little tired. But this is the morning of day five. It is the day after Christmas and my sons are still here and in town. And so we're, we're doing a lot of fun stuff today with family. 
but I feel better. I feel more clear. I don't feel weepy. I don't feel high. I just feel kind of normal. So at this point, I'm feeling like I am definitely through the worst of the sugar withdrawal, definitely. The first three days were intense hell, and I'm not even that high sugar a person naturally because I'm very low carb. So anyway, very, very interesting. Okay, this is the middle of day six of quitting sugar and white flour, and I had a great day yesterday, very level emotionally, and I'm having a great day today. And in fact, downstairs in my basement, I'm just breaking away for a moment because I'm hosting yet another Christmas party, a family Christmas party. I'm now in my 60s, so it has come upon me and my husband to sort of be the matriarch and patriarch of the family, I guess, which is wonderful. It's a, it's a nice time of life. And uh, you see the mess behind us there. Oh, well. Oh, well, it is what it is, as my husband would say. But anyway, I am on day six of quitting sugar and white flour, and I really do feel good. And I have no food cravings, and I just had chili with Fritos on it. No ketchup, though, because ketchup is quite high sugar. And I, I'm eating all the Fritos because I've noticed that my weight, I like to be in a weight window of 118 to 121, and it creeped down to like 116, and I don't like that. I don't look very good at that, and that kind of worries me. I just don't like to be that skinny. So anyway, that is where I am today. But I will say the first three days of quitting sugar and white flour are a huge roller coaster emotionally and physically. You feel tired, worn out, overly emotional. It's crazy. But now I feel very good and very level. Well, that was a look at my first six days on no sugar, no flour, and no artificial sweeteners. And I hope you will take my 30-day challenge right along with me. And if you would like to do that, I hope you'll put a little statement down below the video about where you are right now or maybe some goals you have in going through this 30-day no sugar, no flour, no artificial sweetener challenge. Or if you have other things that have worked for you, please share them in the comment section below the video because we're here as a community of people trying to be our best in 20. 2022. And if you'd like to take the 30-day challenge right along with me, following are a few ground rules I hope you'll follow. The first is to weigh yourself and take good before pictures. And don't get too anal about this. Don't worry about it too much at all. Just go ahead and step on that scale. I know it's scary if you haven't done it in a while, but go ahead and step on that scale and write it in your cell phone on today's date or somehow make a note of today's weight and also the date that you're starting. And also take before pictures of yourself because Susan Pierce Thompson of Brightline Eating said one of her greatest regrets is that she doesn't have any before pictures of herself because she was just humiliated at the idea of taking her photos when she weighed so much. And now she said she would give anything to have those. And you will start seeing your body change very quickly if you follow along with me on this new eating plan. But please take a good before picture of yourself in some close fitting clothes, maybe shorts, something like that, from the front and then from the side. And also again, write your weight down. The second guideline is no sugars of any type, and that includes good old table sugar, but it also includes sweeteners that you might think are healthy. Things like honey, agave, maple syrup, corn sweeteners, that kind of thing. Anything that you would use to sweeten something you're not supposed to use. And the second guideline is no flour of any type, and that is white flour, whole wheat flour, rye flour, any type of flour at all, oat flour, even if you've heard that it's healthy, any kind of flour you're going to avoid during this. The next guideline is no artificial sweeteners of any type, and that includes the obvious ones like saccharin and aspartame, things like that, the chemical sweeteners, but it also includes healthy sweeteners like stevia. And I was very guilty of thinking, well, stevia is a natural substance, and so it's not as bad as those other chemical artificial sweeteners, but actually it is. The studies show that using artificial sweeteners does not affect weight gain at all, and in fact, it may cause you to gain more weight because it keeps you craving that highly sweet taste. So no artificial sweeteners at all. Well, thank you for watching my video, and if you're not a subscriber and you're interested in all things that help us look and feel our best if we're 30, 40, 50, 60 plus like me, then I hope you'll subscribe to my channel, and if you could give this video a thumbs up, that would be wonderful. Well, I always like to leave you with a little thought for the day, and I've been reading from these Louise Hay How to Love Yourself cards, and these are actually affirmations. Okay, let's go ahead and choose a card, hopefully something very positive to think about for today. Ooh, this is good. 
I have the power to make change. I have the power to make change. This is so odd that this came up because right now what we're trying to do in this 30 day challenge is to make a very important change to our bodies and hopefully to our lives, a change which can have a positive impact now and in our future years. I have the power to make change. I have the power to make change. I hope you remember that affirmation. And one thing that I think is really important for all of us, something that I learned in another 12-step program that I dealt with in terms of quitting alcohol years ago, like 22 years ago, is I have the power to make change, me and my higher power. God is my higher power and when you're attempting to change your life, sometimes it's important to rely on that higher power. In my case, I rely on God to help me realize that I have the power to make change and to do that one day at a time. And with regard to this 30 day challenge, remember that you don't have to give up sugar, flour, and artificial sweeteners for the rest of your life. You just have to do it for this one day. And in this one day, let's remember that we have the power to make change. Take care, and I'll see you in the next installment of the Slim You in 22 series.